Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrefil anbiya'i vel mursalin. Muhammedun Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Teslimun kathiran kathira. Femme ba'du. My brothers and sisters, Islam is not a buffet where you pick and choose what suits you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ Allah said, will you be, are you those who take something from the kitab, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you leave out the rest? Do you believe in some things and you do not believe in others? أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ this is the big problem. This is the big problem of uh, many of us where we pick and choose, or we like to pick and choose. But that's not, uh, that is not what Islam is, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as I mentioned before, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَٰلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I said, said, Do you believe in some of the, of the scripture, the book, and you reject the rest? And then Allah is, Allah is answering, uh, asking a rhetoric, rhetorical question and answering it and he says is there any reward for those who do so among you other than disgrace in this worldly life and being subjected to the harshest punishment harshest punishment on the day of judgment for Allah is never unaware never ghafil of what you do. Allah is not unaware of what you do. You cannot hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is in a walnut shell, not a coconut shell. This is in a shell the problem with us today, illa mashallah. The problem of the Muslims today is not that we we are not kufar, alhamdulillah. We do not deny, we do not uh, we are not atheist, but we pick and choose. We like to pick and choose. It is as if Rasulullah came with a uh, with, with multiple flavors of Islam, right? Sugar-free Islam and salt-free Islam and diabetic Islam and Islam for hypertensives and uh, fat-free Islam and you know, la hotel. I mean, think about that. Islam came as one thing. Islam came as one religion. Islam did not come with different flavors. I don't like this, so I can do that. I don't like that, so I can do that. No. The whole point of Islam is to make our desires subservient to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the reason why Rasulullah said, you will never have faith until you make what you want and your wills subservient to and subject to the deen that I have brought. He said this very clearly. He said, you cannot have faith. You can say what you want, but you will never have faith until you make subservient your will to the deen, to the religion that I have brought. And this is our problem. May Allah protect us from ourselves. So Islam is not about picking and choosing. Islam is about obedience and submission because we know Allah. Obedience and submission because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The attitude of the Muslim is not simply submission, but to submit joyfully, to want to submit, to love to submit, to live to submit, to submit to the one who created us and blessed us in ways we cannot count, 
who protect us, protects us from all evil and tests us and helps us to pass the tests and rewards us in this life and even more in the next. To submit joyfully to the only one who is worthy of worship. To submit because and as evidence that we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know and to do what is best for us. To submit knowing that what is with Allah is better than what is with us. With us. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Mr. Salam, tomorrow meaning in the day of judgment in the Akhirah, I will please you. That is the reward of submission. You submit in this life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will please you in the next life. To submit knowing that what is with Allah is better than what is with us. To submit to demonstrate our allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and sisters, the two connections which will go with us when we leave this world, the connection with Rasulullah that is Allah and His Messenger the two connections which will go with us when we leave this world are our connection with Allah and His Messenger Rasulullah Wasallam. The connection with Rasulullah Wasallam will be our identity when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be called by it, by that identity on that day. We will be called as the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So who is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The one who obeys him or the one who disobeys him? Now, just think about this and subhanAllah, uh, what has happened to our minds? So Islam therefore is not only to submit but to want to do it, to find joy and fulfillment in doing it, to do it proudly as a sign of our identity which we don't hide but display as we display famous brands. And that is why for a true Muslim to submit is not a struggle at all. It is what he loves to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the one who submitted joyfully, Ibrahim alayhi salam. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ When his Rabb ordered him submit, he said, I have submitted. I have submitted to the Rabb of all the worlds. Alameen. أَسْلَمْتُ أَكِلْتُ I have eaten. أَشْرَبْتُ I have, I, have, I have drunk. Right? ذَهَبْتُ I left, I went. So, Aslam to, I have submitted. He doesn't ask for time. He doesn't hesitate. He doesn't say, let me think about this for a while. He doesn't say, I will submit if it makes sense to me or if it seems logical to me or if it is politically correct or whatever. He says, I have submitted. We submit because we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that trust produces complete peace of mind. A total absence of fear because we know who is in control. When we submit, our will is superseded by the desire to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why the slave has no will of his own. He wants whatever his Rabb wants for him. As one of the scholars said, my brother Farid from uh, Hyderabad sent me that little clip this morning. As I was writing this khutbah, alhamdulillah, this, uh, this uh, reminder, it came to me. The scholar says, the love of Allah is the purest and greatest of all love. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the purest and greatest of all loves. It gives life to the heart. It is sustenance for the soul. And is the roadway to eternal success. Love is the road to Jannah. It is the main reason we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the only way to live a true, meaningful life on earth. SubhanAllah. What a beautiful reminder. What beautiful words. To submit because we love Allah. Because we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the ajeeb, the strange thing is we, don't, we live our lives in such a 
mechanical way. We do this, for example, with all professionals in our life. People who know more than we know because they have specialized in that profession. You don't go to a doctor and tell him what to prescribe. You go to a doc doctor and ask him. And when he tells you, do this or do that, eat this or eat that, you do it. You don't say, no, no, hold on a second, I'm not convinced. Why must I eat this? No. You obey. You go to, a, to something is wrong with your car, you go to the mechanic, you don't tell the mechanic what to do. You tell the mechanic what's wrong with the car and the mechanic then fixes the car and you know gives you a bill and you pay the bill. You don't teach him how to do his work. Similarly, with any professional, you sit in a plane, you are literally handing over your life to the pilot. You don't even know the pilot. Think about this, how, how, how amazing it is. You don't know the pilot. You do not even know his name. There was a time when they used to announce that. I mean, not that it makes any difference, but, you know, I don't even know. I don't think they even do that now. You don't know his name. You don't know if he's a real pilot or not. You don't know if he's qualified or not. There was a, there was a case of a couple of hundred PIA, Pakistani airline pilots, who were flying without licenses. I mean, they knew how to fly, but they had no pilot's license. And they were, you know, thanks to corruption or something, they had been given uh, jobs and they were flying all over Pakistan until it came to light and there was a big scandal. So, you board a plane, you don't ask any questions. And you have complete faith and trust that this man or woman knows how to fly the plane, that they will land it safely. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who we know, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself to us. We see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything around us. We see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within us and around us and surrounding us. And yet when it comes to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have questions. Isn't that strange? Isn't that the, the, the strangest and the saddest and the most tragic thing? I remind myself in conclusion that this love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a gift. It is the reward of submission. Tawakkul, which is complete trust in Allah, is the reward of taqwa. We make the effort to have and live with taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us Ramadan to make us muttaqoon, not to make us mutawakkiloon. Allah grants us tawakkul as a gift, as the prize, which results in the complete absence of fear of anything in the dunya, if we have taqwa, if we live our lives according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the muttaqoon and to grant us taqwa so that we also become among the mutawakilun. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika